I am in Michigan, in a city on Lake Michigan that was once known as the Catskills of the Midwest. South Haven, Michigan. South Haven is on Lake Michigan, so it's always been a port city. In the 1800s, the industry was timber, and by the late 1800s, the industry was farming. But there was another industry that did very well here. That's the resort and tourism industry, and it's doing quite well to this day. Sandy beaches, incredible lake breezes, and a charming downtown make South Haven a very popular summer tourist destination. Location? in southwestern Michigan on Interstate 196 at the mouth of the Black River and on the shores of Lake Michigan. Population, around 4,300 with 1,100 boats. Do the math, <laughs> that's lots of boats, people. We're at the Michigan Maritime Museum. We're on the deck of the Friends Goodwill. Um, so you're the captain of this ship or boat? I am the captain of this ship. In this fact, ship. I am the commander of the fleet because here at the we museum, are. we have five on-water vessels that are available for our guests to take an excursion on or have a historic adventure. Oh, great. How often do you All go out? Great. We go out four times a day, seven days a week with our guests, giving them a traditional sailing experience on uh, Lake Michigan. Our first trip of the day at 11 o'clock is geared for kids. We call it a pirate chaser. Second week of August, we'll go to five days a week. So. It's, it's a lot. We got a lot of people. Our capacity is 28 guests. Okay. And we're generally pretty fully booked. So you so. need to you need to reserve, don't you? Reserve in advance. Yeah. So that's a boat. That's a boat. This is a that's ship. That's a linger. This is a ship. So what's so really size difference okay. is is what distinguishes from a ship to a boat. And you is there a cutoff for I don't think so. It's a matter of opinion. Welcome down below, John. Thank this, you. this would have been the only accommodating area on the ship. So this would have served as Oliver Williams' business office as well. So this is where the cargo would have been kept while the ship was underway. It would have been dropped through these two hatches right here. This is where we do our boat building, our boat maintenance, classroom activities. So we're real proud of this exhibit housing the only four wooden rescue boats in one setting. So it's pretty nice. So this is the main exhibit hall. It features the call to duty, what everyone did on the Great Lakes uh, for the war effort of World War II. I'm sure people have told you this, but you seem to know your stuff. I work hard at that, John. <laughs> Thanks, Captain. <laughs> All right. South Haven has a great main street, which is Phoenix Street, which runs right into the marina, which is on the Black River, which runs right into the lake, which is Lake Michigan. It's no wonder that people love South Haven. It's all so convenient. We're on the South Pier in South Haven. That's called South Beach. That's North Beach. Back in the day, this is where all the uh, people in the community came to, and this was all about the resorts, and it was divided by that pier in the middle. So there's a lot of port cities, but not all of them are the mouth to a river like this. That's this true. Is, this is you really... can't walk right from downtown straight out to the light. It's kind of wild, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's that accounts for our popularity. And has that been there in a while? Uh, yep. It has uh, been here since 1903. It's still in use as a navigation aid, but no longer as necessary as it was because of GPS and that sort of sure. thing. That's why the government turned the lighthouse over to the Historical Association. Do you know why it's red? Red, right, return. Does that mean anything to you? If you're in a boat coming into port, you want that red lighthouse on your right. There you go. I didn't know that either, just so you know. Have you yeah. been in it? Oh, yeah. You yeah, have? Yeah, many times. Yeah. And yeah. it's not open to the public? It's not open to the public. So do yeah. you have the keys on you right now? I do not. I do not. I was not asked to bring the keys. <laughs> I just thought maybe you had them. In 1902, the population of South Haven was 4,000. In 2021, the population of South Haven is just over 4,000. But in the middle of the summer, this town grows to 15,000 people. That's a lot of visitors. 
So if you're local to South Haven or you visit here a lot, you're gonna know exactly where I'm at when I do this. Clementines, yeah, these are the onion rings. They sell eight miles of onion rings a year. Why uh, Clementines? Why don't you call it that? Uh, I couldn't think of a name. <laughs> And I was sitting on a piano bench, opened that up, and it said, oh, my darling, Clementines. And I go, we're going to call it Clementines. Yeah. yeah. And it took two years to restore this building, over open two, the doors? Over two years. And you went from 80 seats to how many seats? Uh, we got 260, <laughs> yeah. I might cry. Did you start off serving onion rings right day, from the beginning? Day, yeah, 40 years ago. 40 years ago. <laughs> and with one prior. This is packed up most of the time, yes? Yeah, so get, we'll get an order in uh, tomorrow morning, and this whole entire uh, closet will be filled again. How many a day? Do we know? 300, 400 pounds a day. What? Is that two, two, two thousand pounds a week? You got to dip one at a time. You You're can't. Kidding. Real heavy. Don't shake it. Oh, don't shake it. Just throw them. Oh, I'm not hired, am I? Oh, you're doing good. OK, thank you, sir. You're lying. Is it a secret batter? It's our batter, It's yeah. your batter. Yeah. OK. You're not going to tell me what it is. <laughs> Come on, Al. <laughs> Your grandpa told me the recipe for the for the um, batter. Can we? Yeah. So do you you tell me if you let me hear if you say the same thing. What's 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 the recipe? Hey, I'm 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 just here to do my job. <laughs> Six inch, twelve inch. Order up. You dip. Dip. Mmm. And do you know what the breading is? I don't. Once again, see your recipe, dude. Hell, when are you going to retire? Uh, I'm not. You're not? You'll die. I'll You're die. Yeah. And I got a tea time at 1230. Dude, so we got to go. Yeah. <laughs> so are dogs allowed? Oh, yes. Oh, they're in. All day. They come in. All day. And were you in this kind of business before? No. No, you no. weren't. I'm a medical scientist, clinical laboratory scientist. That was going to be my first guess. Yes. <laughs> what? And I thought, yeah, dogs and babies. I love them. You love them. Good. <laughs> I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Our dog flunked out of obedience school. He's back living here at home. Actually, if you wanted to eat a cookie, these are really healthy cookies. <laughs> well, you can have them. We, Thanks, we, Roxanne. Sure. <laughs> We, of course, have a little bling for the decadent amongst us. Zucchini, do you like your outfit? What's that? Embarrassed you, I know. No. Happens to me every once in a while, too. He once came in and took a toy. Oh, he, he's, he's my shoplifter. <laughs> yeah. There is no indestructible toy, but at least the dog will chew on his toy and not on the couch. You know, the best people get dogs. The person that can open their heart get a dog. <laughs> I doesn't No. I, I'm, no. Oh, I oh, know yeah. you are sweet. OK, mm -hmm. then I want one. OK, <laughs> we can fix him up. This area, southwestern Michigan, and uh, South Haven in particular, is known for fruit production. In fact, at one time, South Haven was the world's largest producer of this fruit and is still the third largest grower of this fruit in the United States. Do you know what fruit I'm talking about? Being diagnosed with breast cancer changes everything, and it happens every single day. Patients and caregivers are quickly immersed in medical issues, but it's the lack of control and feelings of helplessness that can be crushing. ABCD trains breast cancer survivors who can provide support and hope that can only come from someone who's been there. From diagnosis through treatment and beyond, all services are free and virtual. Wisconsin's picture-perfect, historic downtown Greendale isn't just a great backdrop for photos. It's the perfect place to find unique gifts, spend time with a friend, learn about the past, and enjoy the beautiful flowers. Ask anyone who's made memories here. We'll all tell you the same thing. You just gotta see Greendale. Remember when the American dream was being able to say, I made that, I built that, 
Wouldn't it be great if your kids and grandkids chose a career that provides that kind of pride with good pay, but without a ton of student loan debt? A four-year degree isn't the only path to success. We need talented people to make and build. Tell the young people you love that skilled work isn't a thing of the past. It's a bright future. Today, local farms produce over $200 million in annual sales. For generations, people have enjoyed uh, peaches and apples and plums. But what is this area known for? blueberries. In 1969, South Haven was called the blueberry capital of the world. I guess blueberries like to grow in South Haven. Well, what's there not to like? Mm. <laughs> How are you, sir? Very good. Good to see you. Same here. Glad you know this here. business, don't you? I've been in it a few years. <laughs> right? you? About 40 years. 40 years. The store, what do people come in for? The baked goods and the fudge yeah. are our hits, um, but primarily the blueberries and the preserves. Blueberries are the biggest, and that's what we started at. Uh, let's talk about blueberries now. Uh, is this a tree or is it a bush? <laughs> They're a bush. They're a bush. Absolutely. Yeah. Those bushes are probably pushing 80 years old now. Mm. We started out at about 12 acres and we're at about 250 acres right now. So it's a great place to grow. It's ideal for growing blueberries along Lake Michigan here. So there are two ways to pick uh, blueberries. You can either hand pick or you could be on top of a blueberry harvester. Uh, guess what I chose today? Mm -hmm. So it, how's it work? So he... So underneath yeah. is these arms that are shaking the bushes and lined on the sides are some catcher pans. Uh -huh. There's little cups that are coming up and they fall over, and this is where the fruit will fall into. Are there different blueberries? Oh, we have, last I counted, I think 25 different varieties on our farm. So if you're going faster, you're gonna get more, but you might, you might damage a little bit more too, and different varieties respond oh. to it a little bit differently. Yeah. The blueberries that you guys pick, where do they go? So today we're running pints for Walmart. Yeah. Yesterday we ran Costco. We do a Kroger pack. Um, day before we ran Sam's two pound containers. When the fruit comes in, we create a receipt that says where it was picked, at what farm, what variety, um, and how much was brought in. If you love blueberries, this is like a dream come true. It's never ending. From the 1920s to the late 1960s, this was primarily a Jewish resort town, much like the Catskills in New York. This is a place to summer for Jewish families where they would not find discrimination like in other places. So those family owned and operated Jewish resorts are mostly gone, but what remains are the traditions and the memories. This is your synagogue, yes? Well, it's, I belong to this synagogue okay. <laughs> and uh, along with uh, 84 other members. Nice. Do you have any idea like in 1935 what that, how many were in that congregation then? Yeah, 150 to 200. There were? There yeah. were 100 resorts, Jewish resorts, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you grew up in the resort business? Yes. Like Fiddleman's, the resort was your family's resort. As a kid, you, this is what you knew. That's all I knew. That's all you knew? <laughs> That's the facade in front, where the front entrance. And there's the cocktail lounge, the Mai Kai Lounge. Our hotel building, it had 36 guest rooms and our offices. Our pool was one of the first pools built in Michigan. Wow. If you look at movies that, that show, like Dirty Dancing, is that how oh, it felt? Is that what it was like? It, that really it pulled, pulled a couple of strings in my heart. Did it? Because, well, that was it. And we worked so hard. And uh, when we decided to let loose, it was pretty crazy. Was it? So Fiddleman's, what, what is it now? You wouldn't believe it. It is fully developed now as an Orthodox Jewish kids camp, Camp of Gouda Midwest. It's the busiest kosher kitchen I've ever seen. So the main building was right there? No, it no. was right there. Oh, it was right there. Where that open field, it burned down. Why is this camp important for these kids? Oh, I, I think camp is more important than school. They really? Need, yeah, absolutely. They need an outlet. They need yeah. a place to be able to be free, be themselves. So there's a group of them standing right here. I don't see one phone. 
Where, where? No, we, we are technology free here. I'm gonna go put this in my car, <laughs> just so you know. I'm sorry I have this on me. No, right you're, you're allowed to have a phone. Okay, thank you. They're not allowed to have phones. Yeah. Before 17 years ago, how many lakes were on this property? Zero. Zero. How many lakes are in this property now? Four. Your idea? Uh, yes, sir. Figuring, why can't I dig the sand out of the land, then have a water park at the end? We open with the cable park. We can pull five individual skiers at one time here, or we can pull 10 dual skiers. And the two wibbits. So what did you call this thing? Oh, wibbit. And is it a blow-up thing? Yep. This year we have the additional water slides. Cross your legs, cross your arms, and the uh, bigger you are, the faster you go down. Uh-oh. Boom. That's the way it's done, right? Yep. Yep. So all of the things that are here now, was that all part of the master plan, or do you just keep adding? Keep adding. My plan is to add one or th one to three new things every year. Yikes. That's our idea. <laughs> this is spectacular. There's always something. If you don't like the water, there's still things here to do. I am in the kitchen of one of the nine pickleball courts that they have outside. Great pickleball courts. They have three inside in this kitchen. The only kitchen I'm ever in where I don't have snacks. Pickleball. I wish I had brought my racket. Crap. OK, I'm sure you're wondering, like me, how did South Haven, Michigan get its name? So I Googled it. Very interesting. Next time on John McGivern's Main Streets. Uh, this is Rick. This is Dax. Those are some tight pants. Yeah. Swedish pancakes are where it's at. And so. you don't have to be <laughs> Swedish. You don't have to be Swedish. Yum. What the garden is for is to bring the community together in a beautiful, uplifting outdoor setting. Yeah, how many pounds of chips do you put out of here a year? We about 2.6 million pounds on a given year. They're so well known and people just love these, aren't they? Yes. And it's Rockford. Want to wear something that's going to support your favorite show? Shop at Main Street Store. Proceeds go to help us get next season into production. So come on, go shopping at MainStreets.tv. Founded in 1787 by the Ottawa, Miami, and Potawatomi tribes, this area was christened Nikonam, which translates to beautiful sunsets. Pioneering times brought J.R. Monroe, who founded the area in 1833. Okay, so why didn't they call it Beautiful Sunsets or Monroeville? Okay, I, we still don't know. Why they call it South Haven? Take a look. It's a dairy barn. Uh, what are we talking about today? Ice cream. You have to. You gotta have ice cream. Yeah, this is my favorite food. We're talking ice cream, and it's, it's Sherman's ice cream. And the Sherman's family came from the East Coast and settled here in South Haven. They were some of the first people to homogenize milk and then deliver it door to door. Back in the 50s, one of the sons decided he was gonna do ice cream. And they were like, wow, that's amazing. Eventually, they opened what they called the dairy bar. And it was that, it was a bar, it was a fountain. They turned into the best ice cream around. Is it too cold? No, it's only one below. Give me a spoon! When you first start in the summer, you're pretty weak. By the end of summer, you can arm wrestle anyone. Is that right? They go back to school and they take those boys on, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Josie, come here. John Hi. wants to scoop. So the first thing we do is we're gonna get our apron. I hand you a cup. You just go ahead and go for it. It's all about the wrist. Okay. Yeah. I'm terrible at this. Maybe two more. There we go. Not bad? Not bad. We have malts, we have shakes, we have flurries, sundaes, we have everything. We have yeah. to talk about this guy, this girl, <laughs> Blue Moo. Blue Moo is one of the icons here in South Haven and in the state of Michigan. It is painted for blue moon. Kids love it. It turns your tongue blue, your whole mouth blue, but I'm amazed at the number of adults that get it. The blue moon. Yes. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Is my mouth blue yet? How's my tongue? We're ice cream, and we're the best at it. Yeah. Where do you think it comes from? Thanks, blue moo. 
I am on Phoenix Street in downtown South Haven in between Center and Kalamazoo. Now, if I were on this block 80 years ago, they called this place Rotten Row. Why? Because there was a lot of bars, a lot of taverns, so there was a lot of drinking, there was a lot of gambling, there was a lot of um, extracurricular activity. Mm -hmm. So 80 years ago, I swear, I would have been on that side of the street. Most of the time, before Cabaret World, you told me that this used to be an apple orchard. Yeah, this was an apple orchard, and then in the 90s, my dad bought the land, and he designed this racetrack. I had no choice. <laughs> I, I got fired from all my jobs. Did you? <laughs> oh, well, yeah, sorry. He wanted to be his own boss, yeah. I've been racing since the 70s, and I'm just tired of, of hitting trees and stuff. The point was this track was designed by guys who race. These other people, they, they've never taken a flag in their life and they're designing a track. You gotta know what it's like out there. Yeah. Who shows up every year? Well, Grid Life is our biggest event. We have 6,000 people. Yes. There's a big music Five, concert. It's weekends. like a whole big party city here. They love the openness. They wanna camp in those trees. The older people, they wanna run to the motel. Uh -huh. Now the young people, they love it here. I, and they said, can I go uh, up in those trees? I said, go ahead. Go you want? Yeah. Somebody said they're gonna they're gonna make a mess. I'll clean it up. We're pretty laid back too. I think people like that. Right. Yeah. Appreciate we don't have a lot of like pedantic, rigid rules. Are you getting sick? No, no, I'm good. There they go in the Lamborghini. Look at them. Look at them. I've never been this close to a Lamborghini. I can't spell Lamborghini. So this is a car I can handle on a track. <laughs> this car is moving. It's a Lamborghini Evo. Cameraman Jason, do you want one of these? <laughs> I knew you'd say yes, I just knew it. Yeah, I'm just glad to be close to it. Yeah. Every community owes a debt of gratitude to its veterans. We join the people of South Haven honoring and remembering all of those who served. Have you ever been to that place? That place where there's always something new to see? Where there's always something new to learn? That place with so much beauty that it fills you up with joy. That place that speaks your mind and your heart, where inspiration feeds your soul, and where the wonder of the natural world is always growing. Ryman Gardens at Iowa State University. This is that place. John McGivern's Main Streets would not be possible without the generous support of our sponsors for believing in our mission and committing to supporting our upper Midwest communities. Thank you so much, sponsors. Good, good morning. You're the mayor, aren't you? Yes, I'm the mayor. Mayor good Scott, morning. how are you? Good, thanks. You know there's more, scads more, at MainStreets.tv because we assume you want more. Are we wrong? Find me on social media or go to our website. This is gonna be fun. I'm sure that we've not discussed this on the show before, um, and I don't know if I've discussed it in my life before. We're talking rocks. People know what they're looking for. Oh, yeah, I mean, just, just look around. I mean, everybody's looking for rocks here. Yeah. And they brought their buckets, they, they brought their, their wagons. Yeah. yeah. What do you think we can find on this beach? Should be able to find some of the, the lightning stones and then also possibly some Petoskeys or something rarer. This is a lightning stone. Yep. Call lightning stone because of it looks like lightning, it yes. It sure does. Can you find these all over the world? Where, um, where do you find these? Yes, but here in Michigan, we have a kind of a more unique with a dark red kind of irony mud on them. Oh, good. Your shop in South Haven is called Dimitri Don Studios. It's a rock shop. Rock collecting, rock hounding has become very popular uh, over the years. Some people are interested in fossils. Uh -huh. You know, some want only agates. Yeah. Uh, some have certain minerals like apophyllites. As many minerals there are, there are as many people that are interested in collecting them right now. Did you see that guy? He brought his bag and he brought his girlfriend. The bag is half full and the girlfriend's like, 
Yeah, so that's rather interesting. It is, isn't it? A dollar. Uh, you can keep it. You can keep it. I love an old theater. Take a look, that's the Michigan Theater in downtown South Haven. What I love most about it is the marquee. Take a look at that marquee. It's so great. It's so reminiscent of all of the movie theater marquees of my youth. And on the side of the building, an incredible mural. It's like a three-dimensional mural. Take a look at the birds. How great is that? This is a story all about community service. Bobby Walker has worked here as long as I have, and it's greater than 25 years. He makes a difference in people's life. Uh, it's a positive difference every day. Do you know what we heard about you? Do What's you want to hear? What's that? We heard that uh, community service, giving back to community, creating community, what community is all about is the definition of who you are. Congratulations. I would like to thank him helping. Yeah. You play basketball in high school. I'm Hall of Fame in South Haven High School. Congratulations. I never lost an unconference game. You didn't. Were you I, a guard? I was a guard, but I could jump like a center. Is that right? <laughs> Sports. Yeah. Let's face it, it kept me out of the street, out of trouble. Yeah. I'm going to help these young kids play. Yeah. My dream was to see young kids play and be developed. And that's what you see today, these young kids out there playing basketball. Are these South Haven uh, kids? No, actually, they're from Bangor, South Haven, Kalamazoo. They're just around an area kid. Yeah. You're a coach. I'm a coach. And an inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I try to be. But you got black and brown kids in here, and they need some role models to look up to. Yeah. And uh, Bobby Walker and some of his, you know, the elder ones, you know, they they laid the foundations. It's that 45th year doing the Bobby Walker's basketball tournament right out here at Erkenberg Park. 45 years you've been doing this. 45 years. Is it a five on five? It's a five on five basketball tournament. And where do people come from? All over. Chicago, Detroit, Canada. My biggest accomplishment was to make my mom and dad proud. Mm. You accomplished it. Mom, I'm on the right track, helping other people. Thanks for sharing that with me. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thank you. South Haven, your main street speaks to me. But if we unbutt you a little bit, yeah. then, then you got more white. Touch me again, you're dead. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> like, you didn't even, you wouldn't even share one seat, one ingredient. Right, right. What's that about? Grandpa? Rot, rotten. Avenue, rotten row. Good job, boys. Yes. Even the dogs love South Haven. Come on. It's kind of hot here, too. <laughs> <laughs>